What is going on, online fitness coaches? Welcome to another episode of the Change Lives Make Money Online Trainer Podcast. This is the number one show for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow a successful online business. In today's episode, we are talking about five traits of my most successful clients. Five traits of my most successful clients, the ones that are over $10,000 a month. Now, before we get into today's episode, I just want to remind you guys that I'm giving away $1,000 cash in the podcast. So if you want to be entered to $1,000 cash, all you need to do right now is screenshot any podcast episode that includes you on Clubhouse, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at BMarkFit, let me know that you're tuning in. I'm giving away $1,000 cash on June 30th on the podcast. So literally all you need to do, screenshot any episode, share it to your stories, tag me at BMarkFit, let me know that you're tuning in. And I'm giving away $1,000 on June 30th. All you need to do is screenshot and that that's it, you're entered. Okay, so um, this one is kind of like, uh, this podcast episode to me is like some deep truths. Um, I'm going to be sharing some personal stories with you guys in this podcast of like how I uh, overcame some of the things <clears throat> that we're going to talk about. And I'm going to give you guys the five traits of my most successful clients over $10,000 a month. Uh, and I'm going to talk about why these traits are extremely important. I'm going to talk about what most people do instead of these traits. And this part, I'm going to be transparent with you guys. This podcast might trigger some of you. So um, I might say some things in this podcast that trigger you. And if there is something that I say that triggers you or upsets you or causes you to go, fuck that guy, I, uh, I question, I like, I challenge you to look internally and ask yourself, like, why did I get triggered? Like, what was it about this podcast? that triggered? So if you get triggered by this podcast, I challenge you to really look internally and ask yourself, like, why you're getting triggered. Like, what is it about what I'm saying that's causing you to be triggered. That's like the, the challenge that I'm going to give you guys, all right? So let's get into it. The first, the first trait of my most successful client, the first trait, number one, the first trait is that my most successful clients follow through. My most successful clients follow through. Following through with tasks and also following through with commitments. Now, to illustrate the, impo the importance of this trait, I want to talk about um, how I, like, I used to suck at following through. Um, I used to be the type of person that would bail on plans last minute. I used to be the type of person that would say I was going to do something with somebody and then like three or four days before I would just bail. I'd just be like, ah, sorry, I can't. And I'd come up with some sort of legitimate bullshit reason about why I couldn't follow through on what I said I was going to do. And this trait actually almost ruined a friendship of mine. So I'm going to be, I'm just going to share it. Cause like, I want to share about like these deep personal, uh, deep personal kind of truths for me, uh, to kind of like show you guys that like these came through like trials. So, um, I used to be the type of person that would just bail on commitment. So I remember, uh, I booked a trip to Edmonton to go see one of my friends, Brendan Lund. And I booked a trip to Edmonton. I was supposed to go see him. I was supposed to fly out there. Um, and this was before COVID. And to be completely honest with you guys, like, I just wasn't feeling it. Like when I said yes to booking the trip, I didn't really want to go anyways. Um, but I committed to it and I said I was going to go. And two days before the trip, I, uh, I called Brendan and we'd been planning this trip for like a month. Two days before the trip, I called Brendan and I said I was sick. Just made up some like bullshit. I'm sick. Uh, and he was like, okay, uh, sounds good, man. Like stay home, get safe. But well, he's a good friend of mine. So like obviously he wasn't going to argue with me and see if I was sick. I was like, sorry, I'm sick. I like don't want to come. That same weekend, I ended up going out and I like I did a little bit of like coaching for uh, a high school uh, football team, but I was on the field like yelling and screaming. And so he DMs me. He's like, "What are you fucking talking about? You're sick." He's like, "I see you like on your stories, like out and about. Like like if you didn't want to fucking come, why didn't you just tell me?" He's like, "I fuck." He's like, "I hate when people just bail on me like that. Like what's wrong?" Like he was like upset, as he should be, because I said I was going to do something and then I didn't do it. I like I didn't follow through. Um, so that was like my kind of wake up call. And this was like uh, a year and a half ago, uh, two years ago before COVID. And this is what kind of made me realize like, okay, like I don't want to be the type of person that ever does that. So now like those of you guys that are my friends now, like if I say I'm going to do something like it's like, it is fucking happening. Um, unless I'm like dead or in the hospital, like I follow through, um, with my commitments to other people, but also in my commitments to myself. I actually want to talk about how this trickles into your business too, though, because if you're the type of person that doesn't follow through, like you're the type of person that bails on commitments last minute, or you say you're going to do something and then you don't do it. Like you might not think that that has an effect on your business, but that's fucking everything in your business. 
Because the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. And so if you're willing to bail on a commitment with a friend or a family member or a coworker, and like you don't have the balls to say no, so you just bail last minute, like that is going to cause you to do that in other areas of your life. Like it's going to, there's going to be a post that you don't want to make on social media. And so you're not going to make it because you don't feel good. Or there's going to be a client that you're supposed to call at a certain time and you're going to cancel the call because you're not feeling good. And so if you develop the habit of not following through and you develop the habit of quitting because it gets like, because it's like you know, quitting because, you know, you don't feel like it, like that sort of trait, like quitting is going to be like littered in every single thing that you do. So most people have a habit of bailing. Most people have a habit of bailing. Also, most people are people pleasers. So they say yes to things without recognizing, like without actually checking in with themselves and seeing if they want to do it. And then last minute, they realize that they don't want to do it. And so they end up bailing on the person. But like, that's what you're not realizing is that like, if you're a people pleaser, that's actually causing more damage than having the courage to say no. So like, if you're gonna break the commitment, don't make it in the first place. This is the exact same thing as like, let's talk about like an online business, right? Let's talk about an online business. So a lot of online trainers want to start an online fitness business and they want to get to $5,000 a month, but then they just don't fucking follow through. Like they're like, they're, they're like, yeah, I want to get to 5k and I'm really excited to get to 5k and I'm going to do this thing and this thing. And I'm going to, and I see, honestly, I love my, I love my fucking clients in the 10k Academy, but like the, the thing that breaks my heart the most is when somebody comes into the 10k Academy because they want to get to 10k a month and then they quit the 10k Academy and then they come back three months later because they want to learn. And I'm like, bro, like if you didn't quit for that three months, you'd like already be almost there. But so many people develop the habit of quitting. They develop the habit of quitting because it's like when it gets hard, they just like bail on their commitments. They don't have the follow through. And so for me, it's like when I want to do something, you guys, like if I want to learn a new skill set or, or, um, or I want to learn a new skill set or develop a new character trait, or I want to like level up some area of my life. Like I pay in full for that fucking thing. Whether that be like, uh, whether that be like a, a course that I want to take, like I just hired a TikTok mentor and I just paid in full. I'm like, I don't want to do a payment plan. I want to pay in full because I intend on following through. Right. I think a lot of people plan on exiting out because they're afraid that they're going to quit. And that's a reason that they're not successful. My most successful clients fucking follow through. And that means when it gets hard, following through means when it's not fucking convenient, following through means when it's extremely difficult. And the last thing you'd want to do is work on your online business. My most successful clients follow through. I got a story for you guys. One of my clients, uh, Caleb Zisk, who is actually, Caleb Zisk is actually one of my head coaches inside of my 10K Coaching Academy. Caleb Zisk, he's a good guy. Caleb was in my 10K mastermind um, when COVID hit. And uh, this was like, right, this was like a year and a half, two years ago, right, right when COVID struck. So COVID comes, boom. As soon as COVID comes, like five or six of Caleb's clients cancel. He's in the 10K Mastermind. The 10K Mastermind is an investment every month. It's like, there's like a, a financial commitment. So Caleb was worried because he had a bunch of his clients cancel their recurring subscriptions, but he had to pay for the 10K Mastermind every single month. And he messaged me. He's like, bro, like, I think I'm going to quit. Like, I don't know if I can, like, I don't know if I can do this. Like, I'm thinking of, like, canceling. So I got on the phone with him. I talked to him. Me and Caleb chatted for, like, a good 30, 45 minutes from, like, about the Mastermind. And he's like, okay, I'm going to I'm gonna commit. I'm going to go all in. I'm going to figure this out. Three months later, Caleb got to $10,000 a month. Because when it got hard, Caleb was against adversity and he had a conversation and instead of quitting on himself, he followed through. Now his business is making 10, 15, $20,000 a month every month. He's also a head coach inside of my academy because Caleb follows through. Yo, if you want to be successful, you need to learn how to follow through. You need to develop the discipline to follow through. You need to say to yourself, like, no matter fucking what happens, no matter what it doesn't matter how many times I post without getting clients. It doesn't matter how many videos I have to watch. It doesn't matter how many fucking hours I need to put in. I will get successful. I will figure this out. That's follow through, right? Not like, oh, I'm going to quit on my workouts because it's hard. That's not a trait of a successful client. Not, oh, I'm going to stop posting on social media because, you know, nobody's engaging with my stuff after posting for two weeks. That's not follow through. That's a weak mentality. You will fail with that mentality. If you want to be successful, you need to learn how to follow through and you don't have to be perfect, right? Because we're, we're humans. I'm humans. There's some times that like, I, I, I want to follow through, but there's some times that I fall short, but I always give my best effort because I know that in order to be successful, I need to follow through. 
So if you're an online fitness coach and you're listening to this and you want to become successful, I'm telling you that you need to develop the habit of following through. Stop fucking quitting when it gets hard. Stop quitting when it's not convenient. And another thing I'm going to say is like when it comes to like making commitments and, and, and the way we do one thing is the way we do everything. Like if you're the type of person that will make plans with somebody and then cancel on them last minute, I'm telling you, just develop the courage to say no. Like don't commit to it in the first place. Because if you're just going to bail, like that's going to cause more of a rift and bail and make a bullshit excuse that will cause more of a rift than just having the courage to say no to doing something because you don't want to do it in the first place. So my most successful clients follow through. All right. That's number one. Number two, this one's fucking number two is intense. Get ready. My most successful clients, number two, take it on the chin. My most successful clients take it on the chin. Most people are really fucking good at blaming everybody other than themselves. Most people are really good at saying, oh, the reason I'm broke is because of COVID. The reason I'm broke is because the government screwed me. The reason I'm broke is because I got fired. The reason my online business isn't growing is because another business coach screwed me. The reason I'm not growing on social media is because the algorithm sucks. The reason that I'm not blah, 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 blame, 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 blame. The reason that my mindset sucks is because like, you know, I had a bad experience in childhood. Blame, 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 blame. Like, yo, everything that you're creating in your life is created by fucking you. You are the common denominator in all of your problems. I remember when I was a drug addict, um, I literally blamed every single person in my life for everything that was happening except for myself. But like, even why I was addicted, to, the reason I'm addicted to drugs is because my mom abused me when I was younger. And, and I like, and I didn't meet my dad until I was 26. And I watched my blah, 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 blah. And then like, nobody in my family loves me and everybody abandoned me. And so I have to abuse drugs, which is fucking bullshit. Like I'm the one that picked up the drugs in the first place. That was me. And until I looked at myself in the mirror and like, and was like, Hey, like, this is your fucking fault. Like you got yourself here. You got to get yourself out. You got to take it on the fucking chin. But so many people are so fucking good at blaming everybody other than themselves. And so as a result, they never fucking improve and they always stay the same person. How many of you guys know somebody like this who like their entire life they've been blaming other people, blaming the government, blaming their childhood, blaming their divorced husband, blaming this, blaming that, never fucking changing, right? And that's, that is, that is like, the trait of an absolute person that will guarantee, guaranteed to fail. I guarantee you, if this is you, you will fail. I'm sorry. I'm going to fucking be straight. If you, if this is you, you will never improve and you will always be the same fucking play, person. Always. You can't, you can't, you can't change a character trait or solve a problem until you look at yourself in the mirror and actually realize what the fucking problem is. And the problem is you. You are the problem and you are also the solution. But so many people are like fucking his fault and he fucked me over and she fucked me over and the government did this and the algorithm sucks and my content, like you're the fucking one. It's you. You have to take it on the chin. I had a call with one of my clients the other day um, who's in my 10K mastermind. He actually didn't know I was going to call him. He, uh, he messaged me with a few voice notes saying he was struggling. And I like... Looked at the voice notes and I was like, I need to fucking give it to this guy straight. So I called him. I was like, what's up? I'm like, tell me what's going on. He told me everything. And I just gave him super direct feedback. And it was like, I was like, do I have your permission to be direct? He's like, yep. I was like, I just told him, I'm like, you're, you're, this is why, this is why, this is why you might not like hearing it, but this is exactly what you need to do. Step one, step two, step three. Uh, his name's Alex Sundar. He's one of my like, best clients. I love the kid. He took it. And he was just like, okay. I was like, how are you feeling? He's like, I understand. He's like, he just took it on the chin. The next day, Alex sold $4,000 worth of programs. The entire month, he, like, he, he was struggling all month. After taking it on the chin like a fucking man, the next day he sold $4,000 worth of programs. My best clients take it on the chin, which means that you won't change your fucking life until you realize that you're the one that created all your problems in the first place. Not your mom, not your dad, not the government, not COVID, not the gym that fired you. It's fucking you. You're the problem. And you're also the solution. And until you can look at yourself in the mirror and take it on the fucking chin, like a man or a woman, you're never going to change. You'll always be the same fucking person. 
You created your reality. And that means you can create another one too. I, that's number two. That's number two. My most successful clients take it on the chin. They don't blame anybody else. It's all on them. You with me so far? All right. Let's go to number three. My most successful clients traits, number three. My most successful clients over $10,000 a month set high targets. My most successful clients over $10,000 a month set high targets. See, most people set low goals that they know that they can achieve because they don't want to fail. Most people set goals that they know for sure. You know, they're, they make $5,000 one month and they're like, okay, cool. My goal is $5,000 next month. What the fuck? Why would you do that? Like, I don't understand. Why would you set a target that you know you can hit? Like, don't set small goals. Small goals aren't going to spark your inspiration that's going to get you that next level. Small goals will keep you stuck in your comfort zone because you know you can fucking hit it. You already hit it once. You don't need to really do anything different in order to hit that goal again. You can stay in the same place. And in staying in the same place, you stagnate and you never change. My most successful clients set high fucking targets. They're like, yo, let's let's go. Like, I want to I do some shit. Um, I want to talk about my client, Jay Stewart. So Jay Stewart. Um, last year, around this time, Jay Stewart had been working with another business coach. That was his first mistake. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, not. Um, had been working with another business coach and he got his business to $3,000 a month. So when he reached out to me, he's like, yo, Brian, I'm at $3,000 a month. I want to scale. I want to grow. Like, can I join your program? I'm like, 100%. I love Australian dudes. Come on in. Um, so Jay Stewart took his business from $3,000 a month to $15,000 a month in five months. At the time, Jay, I just opened up the 10K Mastermind. At the time, uh, Don Lamb was joining the 10K Mastermind. Don Lamb was at $40,000 a month. And Jace was joining the 10K Mastermind. And Jace was at $15,000 a month. Dawn at $40,000 a month, by the way, was like, everybody was like, oh my God, like, that's crazy. Like, I would love to get those results. Dawn Lamb had basically set like this. Chad Morgan had the big standard, which was uh, $45,000 a month. Dawn Lamb was close to him and Jace was in the same class as Dawn. So Jace joins the mastermind. And I remember when me and Jace chatted about him joining the mastermind, this is what Jace said. He's like, yo, honestly, the reason I'm joining this mastermind is because Dawn Lamb is at $40,000 a month. And if Don Lamb is up $40,000 a month, like I love the guy, like I'm nothing against Don Lamb, but like if he can fucking do it, why can't I do it? So Jace literally told me, he said, I will make $40,000 a month in this mastermind. He's like, I will graduate this mastermind at $40,000 a month. Like bet my life, this, that will happen. Jace joined the mastermind at $15,000 a month. He graduated the mastermind six months later at $50,000 per month. And the reason he fucking did that is because that was his target in the first place. My most successful clients set high targets. Guys, when I wrote my vision down, um, I, I know I've talked about this in a podcast before. And if you're a, a hashtag loyal, change lives, make money on the a podcast listener, you've heard this before. In my, like when I was recovering from my drug addiction, like I wrote down that I would be a millionaire. I, I, I claimed it like seven years ago. Like my, like, because that's what it fucking takes. Like, that's what it takes to have the inspiration to go long-term is like, I set high fucking targets. Like, I don't want to play to participate. I want to be the best in the fucking game. Like, that's like a high target that will like stir my blood. That will get me excited. That will get me motivated. Like you need to set high targets. You need to have a target that like gets you up, gets you out of bed, gets you excited, gets you driven, gets you motivated. But so many online coaches, and let me know if you make this mistake. I want to know. And I'm not like, I'm not bashing you, but I want to make you aware that this is a trait that's holding you back. So many online coaches will achieve an income goal that they think is very exciting. And then it's almost like they're afraid to set a bigger income goal than that because they might have thought that it was luck the first time, or they might have thought that like there, there's no way that they can hit it again. And so they don't set that goal again because they're afraid that they won't make it because they made it once. But what if it was a fluke? What if it was lucky? What if it was just like this like one-off thing? And so they don't set any higher targets because they're afraid of failing. And so they set targets that they know they can hit because it feels comfortable to set a goal that's easy to accomplish. That's what most people do. And in that, slowly you stagnate. 
slow because guys, life is always moving forward. And so for those of you guys that are like interested in maintaining what you have, unfortunately, that's not the way the world works. Life is always moving in a forward direction. And if you look at like a graph, right? Like look at, um, I want to use the analogy of like a, the stock market, right? Like if you look at a stock, like a stock is never just flatlining. Stock is either going up or it's going down. And that's what's happening with your business. Your business over a graph of time is either going progressively up or it'll go progressively down. And you get to decide where that goes, right? Do you want it to go up or down? So my most successful clients, as in the ones that grow month after month after month after month after month in like income and revenue and income and rev and income and impact and income and impact, those clients are extremely, they set extremely high targets. And that's what keeps them motivated. Is this making sense? You guys with me so far? Drop a fire if you're watching this and this is valuable. Let's fucking go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right, let's go. Um, number four, the fourth, let's quickly recap actually. So the, the, the three traits we've talked about so far, number one, following through. Like when you say you're gonna do something, make sure it's fucking done. Hell or high water, even when it gets hard, especially when it gets hard. That's what most people quit when it gets hard. Develop the habit of following through or you are develop the habit of quitting. If you don't develop the habit of following through, you're developing the habit of quitting. Number two, take it on the chin. Take it on the fucking chin. If like everything in your life is your fault, everything. If you don't have clients, it's your fucking fault. If you have lots of clients, it's your fault. If you, if you lose seven clients, take it on the chin like a man or woman, that's your fault. Like everything in your life is created by you. And when you accept that full responsibility, you give yourself the power, right? Number three, my most successful clients set high targets. Like they set targets that are like, they, like, like, oh, I'm fucking excited to try to hit that. They set targets that scare them. Your, your goals should scare you. If your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. All right. Number four, numero four, the fourth trait. I told you guys this podcast was going to be fucking fire. I was feeling it when I was writing it. Number four, my most successful clients, the ones over $10,000 a month are extremely competitive. My most successful clients are extremely competitive. Most successful clients are extremely competitive. Like most online coaches will get intimidated by other online coaches that are crushing it, right? So I've got a client, his name's Don Lamb. Don Lamb is making $100,000 a month. $100,000 a month. That's a lot of money as an online fitness coach. Like a lot of people are super intimidated by that. Um, another example is a lot, like I've got 135 students over $10,000 a month. A lot of people are very intimidated by that. If you want to be successful, you need to use that not as, uh, intimidation, but as inspiration. Like, yo, Don Lamb is fucking doing it. Why can't I do that? Jay Stewart, Brian's working with Jay Stewart. Jace is at $73,000 a month. Like if Jace can fucking do that, I can fucking do that. And my most successful clients don't view it as like, oh my God, like they got something that I don't. My most successful clients view this as like, yo, if homie's fucking doing it, I can do it. Like he's not special. He doesn't have any like special God-given abilities that I don't. He's got a mouth. He's got hands. He's got eyes. He can talk. I can talk. I got, I, you know what I mean? Like if he can do it, why can't I do that? I can fucking do that. So my most successful clients don't view other people as, as like better than them. They see other people that set targets or milestones, and now they've got a level to beat. Don Lamb, I want, I want to talk to you guys about Don Lamb because he's like, Don Lamb is the current PT domination record holder. He makes $100,000 a month. Before Don Lamb was the record holder, it was Chad Morgan. Now, Chad Morgan was on the, on the um, podcast this week. Uh, there was a podcast that was dropped a couple episodes ago, and I got a ton of positive feedback about that. Chad is amazing. Farshad is amazing. Um, but Chad was the PT domination record holder in my program while he was in my mastermind, Chad Morgan made $44,000 USD uh, in one month. So that was like the record. So when Don Lamb, so $44,000 USD, by the way, is, um, I think that's like $57,000 Canadian. Don Lamb is Canadian. So Don Lamb, when he joined the mastermind told me, he's like, I'm going to beat Chad Morgan's record. And in order to beat Chad Morgan's record, he had to make more than $57,000 Canadian in one month. Um, so the first month in the mastermind, I think Don made like $40,000 Canadian. And the second month we got on a call and he's like, bro, I need to be this fucking record. And so I like, 
I worked with him. I gave him some strategies. We talked about some like, like how to fix some bottlenecks in his business. The next month, Don Lamb, this is not, this isn't a joke. He told me about this. Don Lamb worked 18 hours a day, six days a week for the entire next month. And in the month, so that month he made $73,000 and he broke Chad Morgan's record. And in order to break Chad Morgan's record, he worked 18 hours a day, six days a week. He said he'd only trained two or three times, which is like, obviously don't do that. But that's how competitive Don Lamb is. He saw Chad Morgan's record. And instead of being like, oh my God, that's so crazy. He's like, this is the target that I will beat. And he just put in the fucking work and did whatever it took to break that record. And my most successful clients have that mentality. It's like, if one person is doing it, I can fucking do it. That's the mentality. If that guy can do it, I can do it. There's no reason I can't do it. He's doing it. I can do it. There's no fucking way. I'm going to learn what he's doing. I'm going to learn what Brian's teaching and I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to do it better. And that is what my most successful clients do. My most successful clients are extremely competitive. Yo, I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I started this podcast, the Change Lives Make Money Online Trainer Podcast, the number one show for online fitness coaches. When I started this podcast, there was one other dude that was podcasting for online fitness coaches at the time that was like crushing it. Um, and you guys might know who he is. I'm not going to mention his name because I don't like whatever. But there was one other dude that was doing online fitness coaching podcasting. And he had over 200 episodes on his podcast. And when I started my podcast, I literally said to Kirsten, I'm like, I'm going to beat this motherfucker in a year. I'm like, he's putting out one episode a week. I was like, I'm going to put out five episodes a week for the next 365 days. And I'm going to get more episodes than this dude on this app. I literally told her that as soon as I started, like I wasn't starting a podcast to like have a, like a really cool, like side hobby. I was like, I'm starting a podcast. I'm going to beat this motherfucker. Like that's it. That's my mentality. And now like my podcast has double the episodes that he has, because like, that's just my mentality. Like if you're in the ring with me, you're going to fucking lose. That's how I view it. Like I'm playing to be the best in the game. Like that's the mentality that you need to have in order to be successful. I've also, I like, that's my mentality when I was doing fitness competitions too. I feel like a lot of people do fitness competitions with the intention of winning a participation trophy or they're just like kind of going for the experience. Like I can't do that. Like I don't have that in my DNA. Like I can't play for the experience. Like if I'm playing something, I want to fucking win. Like I want to win. I want first place. I want a trophy. I want the recognition. I want everybody like, that's what I want. Extremely competitive. And that's the trait of all of my best clients as well. They're extremely competitive. Kirsten Martell, extremely competitive. She's a very, very, very competitive human. Maverick Willett, extremely competitive. Very, very, very competitive. My best clients are extremely competitive. Christine Cardenas, extremely competitive. My best clients are extremely competitive. So you need to develop this like mentality that if somebody else is doing it, there's no fucking reason that I can't do it too. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it better than them. That's the mentality, right? That's the attitude. You got to get that like energy. All right, number five. Numero, numero, numero five. Fifth trait, my most successful client. I feel like this is one that all of you need right now. Fifth trait, my most successful client, sa, are quick to implement. My most successful clients are extremely quick to implement because success likes speed. Um, a couple stories for you guys. So story number one, um, Christine Cardenas. She is um, a member of my 10K Academy and my 10K Mastermind. So she uh, joined my program and uh, she was like, be Mark, like what do I need to do? I'm like, go into the units, watch them step by step, et cetera, et cetera. So she goes into the units and she watches this training. And if you're in the 10K Academy, you know what I'm talking about. She watched this training called the low ticket, how to make market and sell low ticket programs. She watched the training and 48 hours later, she sent me and Cole a DM. She's like, yo guys, I just made $6,000. And we're like, what? She's like, yeah, I watched the training, the low ticket, uh, how to make market and sell low ticket offers. I did exactly what the training said step-by-step step, uh, and I made $6,000. And this was like her first, literally her first week in the program. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like that's, that's success like speed. Like she watched and then she immediately implemented. So many people, what they do is they'll like jump into a program or a course. So they'll listen to a podcast and they'll get a good idea and they'll intend to implement it later, but then they'll get caught up with life. And then for some reason it just gets put on the back burner and then eventually it just never gets done. And I feel like that's what a lot of people do with online fitness coaching. Oh, I'm going to like, I'm going to reach out to B Mark eventually. Like I'm going to reach out, like I'm going to, you know, the podcast is fire. I will reach out. But it's like eventually like later becomes never my most successful clients take action immediately. Another example, Janelle wheel. Um, 
Janelle Wheel was in my 10K Academy, joined the 10K Mastermind. And she like asked me, she's like, I want to scale to 30K. She was at $15,000 a month. I was like, Janelle, I literally told her. I was, it was in a clubhouse room, actually. I told her, I'm like, Janelle, if you want to go from $15,000 a month to $30,000 a month, the next move is 100% bet my life TikTok. Like you need to get consistent on TikTok, straight up. Like you need to go to TikTok. You need to get consistent. You need to get good. If you want to get to $30,000 a month, your next move is TikTok. She's like, okay. The next day, Janelle posted three TikTok videos and she posted three TikTok videos for the next 45 days. And she almost quit on TikTok, but because I told her to fucking stick with it, she stayed consistent. Janelle had one of her videos, one, one video went turbo viral, got 300,000 views off of that one video. She got over 150 coaching applications, one video on TikTok because she just took action. She like, listen, she's like, okay, TikTok's the move. I'm going to go. I'm going to do it. I'm going to implement. And she just took massive fucking action for 30 to 45 days, had one video pop off, 300,000 views, 150 coaching applications from one fucking video. One. And TikTok wasn't even her main source of leads. So now Janelle's got TikTok. She's got Facebook. She's got Instagram. She's got, now she's got, now she's got a business, right? But most people still aren't consistent on TikTok, right? And that's why I told you guys, I'm like, this podcast might trigger you because Janelle's been consistent now for two months. So she's got consistent, like now she's got two months of data. She's got two months of like, of like experience in the field, making videos, crushing it. Right. So that's why she's getting the results she's getting. Most people are still wondering when they should start TikTok. You should have started three months ago, six months ago, when I start, first started talking about it. Most people, 60 days later, still haven't posted their first TikTok video. Or maybe they posted two or three and they gave up because they don't know how to follow through. Right. You guys get what I'm saying here? That's it. That's it. That's all. Let's quickly recap. I want to kind of run through my five traits of my most successful clients. And while I'm doing this, I want you to kind of like tell me which trait you feel like you need to work on the most. So while I'm going through this, I want you to tell me which trait you feel like you need to work on the most. So number one is following through, which means that like most people have a habit of quitting when it gets hard or quitting when it's not working or quitting when they hit a little bit of adversity or quitting when they're not feeling like or quitting when they don't feel good. That's what most people do. Most people also are the type of people that will make plans with somebody and then bail on those plans last minute because of a legitimate reason. And they knew they didn't want to go in the first place, but they said yes because they're a people pleaser, but they end up bailing because they don't know how to follow through. Guys, the way that you do one thing is the way that you do everything. And the way that I like, if I say I'm going to do something, it's fucking done. Like I'm doing it. Even if I don't want to, even if I hate every single second of it, if I say I'm going to do something, it's going to get done. Most people don't know how to follow through. So my most successful clients have the character trait of following through. And by developing this character trait, because this is one that's hard to develop, right? It is. By developing this character trait, they instantly separate themselves from everybody else because most people don't have that, right? So developing the character trait of following through. Number two, number two is my most successful clients take it on the chin. Like Alex Sundar. Who, who got some super direct feedback from me, implemented it right away, made $4,000 the next day. My most successful clients take it on the chin. Like, it's like everything that you isn't happening in your life right now is your fault. Everything. And I know that sucks. And I know that you might've had some like shitty things happen to you. And maybe you got cheated on, or maybe the COVID really screwed you over, or maybe you did lose your job and it did suck. But like at some point you need to stop playing the blame game. You need to take it on the chin. You need to move the fuck on. Otherwise, you're just going to stay stuck in the same place, right? Take it on the chin. Number three is high targets. My most successful clients set high targets. Setting high targets means that don't set goals that you know you can hit. You should set goals that scare the piss out of you. You should set goals that are like, holy shit, like this is like makes me nervous, even like admitting this out loud. And then if you're in the 10K Academy, you should tell us about those goals. Because that's where we're going to hold you accountable, right? Number four, my most successful clients are extremely competitive. Extremely competitive. Like they don't view other people as like, oh man, like why can't I have those results? It's like when they see another person crushing it, they're like, that's amazing. And I'm going to fucking crush you. That's like, that's how I view this. Like, I'm like, I'm super happy you're doing really well. That's why I'm like, I'm super happy you're doing well. But then like, secretly, I'm like, I'm going to fucking crush you. Like I am. Like that's how I view it. 
It's like over a long enough period of time, eventually my work ethic will catch you and I will crush you. My most, my most successful clients are extremely competitive. And number five, the last, and I think one of the most important is my most successful clients are quick to implement. But when they get a piece of data or information, instead of sitting on it and waiting on it and like wondering whether or not they should implement it or wondering the best way to implement my most successful clients straight up, just implement absolutely immediately and they get feedback later. Like Janelle Wheel, who wasn't super like stoked that she was on TikTok, but she stayed consistent with it. And now it's her, one of her number one sources of leads. Right? Guys, that's it. That's all. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is the Change Lives Make Money Online Trainer Podcast, the number one show for online fitness coaches who are trying to grow a successful online business. I hope you got value from today's episode because honestly, I enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed delivering it. I enjoyed sharing it with you. Um, these are some character traits that I really, really, really admire in my clients. Uh, and these are also some character traits that are like super, super important to me as a human as well. Like these are some like character traits that I, I, I do my best to live by. Um, and I'm not perfect, but these are ones that care. These are standards that I hold myself to. All right. So that's it. That's all. Thank you guys so much. If you guys want to be interested in a thousand dollars cash, all you need to do screenshot this podcast episode, share it to your Instagram stories, tag me at B Mark fit. Let me know that you're tuning in. And just by doing that, you're automatically interested in a thousand dollars cash. Peace, love, protein. Talk to you guys in the next episode. Let's fucking go.